So in this question, we are given a differential equation as well as a solution to that differential equation. Our job is to verify that the solution is in fact a solution to the differential equation. So what we do is we take our solution and we rewrite it. And then we look back at our differential equation and we'll notice that it contains both the second as well as the first derivative. So this means that we need to calculate the first and second derivative of our solution. We'll begin by computing the first derivative, y prime, and you'll notice that we have a product of two functions, e to the 3x and cosine of 2x, and therefore we need to do the product rule. Now one way of doing a product rule is to take an aside and to let f equal the first function in the product, and then let g equal the second function in that product. To do the product rule, we also need the derivatives of those functions. So f prime would be the derivative of e to the 3x, which we know is e to the 3x multiplied by 3. And then the derivative of cosine is, of course, negative sine. So we're going to have negative sine of 2x. But then chain rule requires us to multiply by the derivative of the inside there. So the derivative of 2x is just 2, so we have to multiply this by 2. Of course, we can rewrite this as negative 2 times the sine of 2x. Now, the product rule has the form as follows. I like to call this fig plus gif when doing the product rule. So this simply means to take f prime, multiply it by g, and then add that to the product of g prime and f. So we'll plug into that product rule formula right there. We begin with f prime, which was 3e to the 3x, and then we multiply that by g, which was cosine of 2x. And then we add g prime. Now be careful because you're adding a negative 2 sine of 2x. So basically you'll end up subtracting 2 sine of 2x. So that's your g prime. And then times f, which was e to the 3x. So there's our first derivative. Of course, as noted earlier, we need the second derivative. But perhaps before we do that, we can clean up the first derivative. If we look carefully, we have a common factor of e to the 3x. And so what we'll do is we'll factor that out. So we'll have e to the 3x, and then that's going to be multiplied by 3 times the cosine of 2x minus 2 times the sine of 2x. So there's our final form for our first derivative. Let's talk about computing the second derivative next. Now, of course, for the second derivative, we will also need a product rule because we have the product of e to the 3x as well as this lengthy function right here. So we'll set up another product rule template, if you will. We're going to let f equal the first function, so that'll be e to the 3x. And then g is going to equal that extended function 3 cosine of 2x minus 2 sine of 2x. We'll need the derivatives of each of these functions. So f prime, once again, is 3e to the 3x. g prime will be nice and steady here. The derivative of cosine, again, is negative sine. So you're going to have negative 3 sine of 2x. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of 2x, so multiplied by 2. And then over here, we have minus 2. The derivative of sine, of course, is cosine of 2x, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside 2x again. That's going to be multiplied by the derivative, or excuse me, that'll be multiplied by 2. So we'll squeeze that in there. We can clean this up a little bit. We have negative 3 times 2. We're going to get a negative 6 there. And then we also have this 2 times 2. We'll get a 4 there. So let's clean that up. So now that we have our f and our g and our f prime and our g prime, we would plug that into the product rule to get this second derivative. Let's not forget that the product rule is this fig plus gif equation. So here we go, f prime was 3e to the 3x times g, which was this extended function right here. Then we have plus g prime, which was this extended function. And then that is gonna be multiplied by f, which is e to the 3x. Okay, great. And so what we might want to do next is summarize the derivatives that we have found, both y prime and y double prime. And there we have it. And then below those derivatives, we have recopied and pasted the differential equation. So here comes the fun part, because we need to take this expression for y prime, the first derivative, and we need to plug it in right there. 
In addition, we have to take our extended expression for y double prime and plug it in right here. And then of course we need to take the given y, which was the solution to the differential equation, and plug it in right there. So let's go ahead and plug all three components into the differential equation. Okay, so there everything is plugged in. Just to emphasize, this is our y double prime right here. And then we had minus six times our y prime, which is right here in red, then plus 13 times our y, which is this term right there. Now we need to simplify this and the objective is hopefully to prove or to show that the left side simplifies to zero. So that at the end of the problem, we'll have zero equals zero. Of course, that is no small task to show that the left side is equal to zero. We can begin to do that perhaps by taking this three e to the three x and we can distribute it into that set of parentheses right there. So we'll do this slowly but surely. We multiply into the first term, we're gonna have three times three. So we'll have nine e to the three x cosine of two x minus, and then we multiply this two times that three, we'll have six e to the three x times the sine of two x. Now this term right here, we also have to distribute. We've got this e to the three x, that needs to distribute kind of backwards here. So when we distribute it to the first term, we're gonna end up with a minus six e to the three x sine of two x. And then we'll have a minus four e to the three x cosine of two x. We probably can't fit this all in one line, but that's okay, we'll keep going here. We're gonna take this minus six e to the three x and we're gonna distribute that into the red set of parentheses. So we're gonna end up multiplying a minus six times a three. That's gonna be a minus 18 e to the three x times cosine of two x. And then we're multiplying a minus six and a minus two. So that's a plus 12. This is maybe where we'll come down here. So we'll have plus 12 e to the three x times the sine of two x. And then we have the rest of the equation. We have plus 13 e to the three x times cosine of two x. Now remember, this is all supposed to equal zero. So let's go on the hunt for some like terms. We can start with the terms that contain cosine of two x. Perhaps we can underline those terms, all of which will contain the cosine of two x, as well as the e to the three x. So just notice that all of these terms contain cosine of two x times e to the three x. Because they're like terms, we would add their coefficients. So we're gonna add nine minus four, so that's five, minus 18, so that's a negative 13, and then a plus 13 right there. So the coefficient goes to zero, and therefore we're left with zero e to the three x times the cosine of two x. That was quite exciting. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the sine of two x times e to the three x. So that's these terms here and here and here. Notice again, those all contain e to the three x times the sine of two x. We'll add the coefficients, we'll have a negative six, minus six, so that's a negative 12, and then plus 12 right there. That means the coefficient of that term is zero. And then we have e to the three x times the sine of two x. And amazingly, if we continue simplifying, zero times this term here is still zero. Same thing over here, zero times that term is still zero. Lo and behold, zero does equal zero. We have verified that the given solution, which was this function all the way back here, this function is a solution to this differential equation because when we plugged in the solution along with its first and second, second derivatives and then simplified, we did get zero is equal to zero.